Welcome to Learn at Ease. In this video, I will provide an overview on glucagon production and its action. So let's get started. Essential organs of the body required to understand the production of glucagon and its function include, stomach, pancreas, circulatory system, muscle, liver and adipose tissue. In the liver or muscle cell, energy reserve in the form of muscle protein and glycogen is shown. The condition under which glucagon function is during starvation and fasting. During such situation, body will start catabolizing protein. This will cause the release of free amino acid which will enter into the blood. Spike in the free amino acids in blood is sensed by alpha cells of islets of Langerhans, and they will release glucagon. This glucagon will enter the blood. The receptors of glucagon are located on liver and muscle cell which belongs to the family of GPCR. I have already prepared a video earlier on GPCR and you would find its link in the description. Glucagon will then bind to GPCR and activates it to produce cyclic AMP, which is second messenger. Cyclic AMP will induce cascade of reactions to catabolize glycogen to produce energy under starving. Similar mechanism also occurs in the adipocyte which stores fat. Glucagon specific GPCR is also located on its cell membrane. Binding of glucagon to GPCR will induce cascade of reactions in the same way to catabolize fat to produce energy from the reserved food storage during starvation. This is the basic outline of glucagon release and action. Now I will explain the production of glucagon by the alpha cells of islets of Langerhans. The sketch of pancreas is shown here. Major portion of pancreas deals with producing digestive juices and contains ducts and this region is known as the exocrine portion. The narrow tail portion of the pancreas carries endocrine clusters of cells, known as islets of Langerhans. This tail portion of pancreas is endocrine in nature. Islets of Langerhans are 1 to 2 million in number and occupy 1% of total space of pancreas. Islets of Langerhans consists of four types of cells that are alpha, beta, delta, and PP cells. They produce glucagon, insulin, somatostatin and pancreatic polypeptide. The arrangement of these cells in islets of Langerhans is remarkable. In the center, there is a cluster of beta cells, whereas, alpha cells are arranged in their periphery. Delta and PP cells are scattered throughout the islets of Langerhans and does not show any specific arrangement. These cells interact with one another in a paracrine fashion. That is when activated beta cells releasing insulin will inhibit alpha cells from secreting glucagon. So, in same way, glucagon secretion will inhibit beta cells to secret insulin, and secretion of somatostatin will inhibit release of both insulin and glucagon. Before proceeding further, you can pause the video to understand the arrangement of various cells in the islets of Langerhans. Now, we will focus only on alpha cells, to understand the production of glucagon. The alpha cell of islets of Langerhans is shown here. The glucagon gene located on chromosome 2, is transcribed and translated to produce preproglucagon which is 179 amino acid long. Preproglucagon crosses the membrane of rough endoplasmic reticulum and enters the lumen. Here, the proteases will act on it to remove some portion of peptide and proglucagon is formed. It is then transported to the Golgi apparatus where it is processed by a series of proteases to form mature glucagon. In the animation, 179 amino acid long peptide of preproglucagon is shown, which, becomes proglucagon in lumen of rough endoplasmic reticulum, then, in the Golgi apparatus it becomes active glucagon consisting of 29 amino acids. Active glucagon is just the small portion of preproglucagon, which ranges from 53rd to 81st amino acid of 179 amino acid long peptide. Active glucagon formed in this way is then stored in secretory vesicles that arise from Golgi apparatus. Now let us see how these glucagon is released from the alpha cell into the blood. Briefly, when the concentration of free amino acids in blood increases due to protein catabolism during fasting, they enter into the alpha cells, also during fasting the ATP levels in alpha cell is low. 
Both these conditions will constitutively induce vesicle containing glucagon to fuse with the cell membrane and glucagon is released into the blood. This is just the outline of the mechanism. The detailed mechanism is not known yet. It is to be remembered that glucagon is released under fasting and stress when sugar is not ingested and the action of glucagon is opposite to that of insulin. Lastly, glucagon will induce catabolism of fats, glycogen and muscle protein, which I will cover in my upcoming videos. Hope you enjoyed my video, stay tuned to my channel. Feel free to share, like and comment. Subscribe to LAE. See you soon.